COP23, the latest annual UN climate conference, was held this month in Bonn, Germany. Carbon Brief brings you three key things you need to know about what happened. One, the two US delegations. After US President Donald Trump announced his plan to withdraw from the Paris Agreement on Climate Change earlier this year, all eyes were on what signs the US would give at the climate summit. The official representatives largely kept their heads down, perhaps wisely so, considering protesters disrupted their one-side event, held on so-called clean fossil fuels. Meanwhile, another unofficial US delegation, made up of key politicians including former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg and California Governor Jerry Brown, set up camp in style right beside the official venue. However, protesters also disrupted their launch event, arguing this alternative We Are Still In delegation isn't doing enough to tackle emissions either. 2. The Talanoa Dialogue The Paris Agreement commits countries to holding global warming to well below 2 degrees and trying to limit it to 1.5 degrees. But when totted up, current national pledges fall well short of this and would lead to more than 3 degrees of warming. This means countries will have to increase their ambitions over the coming years. Next year, we'll see the first time progress on this is discussed and demonstrated by countries. Named the Talanoa Dialogue to reflect a process of inclusive and participatory dialogue traditional in Fiji, hosted the COP this year, the rules for how this will be done were finalised at this year's summit. Talanoa Dialogue happens in 2018, and that's the first opportunity for parties to look at what they have done and what they're going to do and check whether that's enough or not. 3. Pre-2020 Action The Paris Agreement doesn't come into force until 2020, but many argue not enough is being done to tackle emissions before then. A lack of space to discuss this became a huge sticking point at this year's COP. So the, the pre-2020 ambition issue is really about whether developed countries who committed to take the lead in the original framework convention back in 1992, if they have been taking the lead, if they've taken um, specific measures to reduce emissions at home before 2020. And I think many developing, developed countries wanted to just kind of ignore that and focus on post-2020. But developing countries said, no, we actually need to peak global emissions by 2020. So we want that to be a big topic here. A compromise on pre-2020 action was eventually reached. This included more focus on key issues such as the $100 billion per year of climate finance promised to developing nations by 2020 and a push for more countries to ratify the Doha Amendment, a global climate deal for the pre-2020 period.